Um, uh, bienvenue, everyone. My name is Man Alone, um, or Hombre uh, Solo, uh, and uh, Solito. Anyway, so uh, glad you're here. Today we're talking about uh, Solo RPG Month, which, as you know, is a national, international, intergalactic, and tri-county holiday, which, by the way, uh, legally, you should get the month off to solo play. So if you need me to write a note to your boss, just let me know. Um, and so I'm going to go over how we're going to celebrate that with a little solo RPG round robin. If you saw my video or my, I'm sorry, my community post yesterday, you know that I did a little RPG haul because everyone made me uh, spend that money. And so I want to show everyone what I got, but I want to do that at the end of the video in case somebody came here just to um, see what's going on with the solo RPG thing. I don't want to scare uh, anyone off by, by too much waffling. Um, so to get to brass tacks, we're doing a round robin solo RPG thing. This is what it's going to look like in, in, in the most basic way. I'm going to make the first 10 minute video. I will have a character. I'll have a setting. I'll use some system. It's going to be very simple. And then at the end of that 10 minutes, I'm going to upload that video and I'm going to email it to the next person on the list. Then that person has 72 hours and they're going to continue where I left off more or less. And then they're going to do a 10 minute video and it's going to be 10 minutes. It's not going to be 20, 10 minutes. It's going to be 10 minutes. Then when they're done, I'll email the next person. And each time I'm linking to this video so everyone can see it. And then I'll let the next person know and they have 72 hours and on and on and on. We already have some great, uh, some great folks involved in this. We have space for more. So if you're interested in this after this video, please email me at a man alone at proton.me. I always say protein.me uh, at proton.me. Uh, this email address is also in my uh, profile, YouTube profile. So reach out if you're interested. Only requirements um, are that you have to be able to upload a video to YouTube. You don't have to have a thriving RPG channel on YouTube. You don't have to have high definition cameras or a microphone. You could film it on your iPhone, your Android phone, your camcorder if it links up. Um, but it has to be a video, okay? So it can't be audio or like an essay. And it's also a live play. So we're not doing anything in which you do like a recap of your play or a report on it. It should be 10 minutes of play. And the reason for that is because the purpose of Solo RPG Month, this round robin, is to show those folks that are new to this community, that are new to this hobby, that it doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take much at all to just start playing, okay? And we know that uh, all, all of us have started at one time. Some of us are still starting. And when you first start in this hobby, it's weird because it's not very often that we do things that are just for us now. And so because of that, sometimes um, we, get, we get in our own way. And, you know, I could list off the top of my head a few reasons right now that I hear that maybe I experienced at some point or others I know. Oh, I don't have the right system. I need to buy the right system. Oh, I need to read the whole book before I start playing. Um, I don't have uh, enough time to do this. I can't set aside enough time. I don't know when to start. Once I sit down to start, I get really confused and I don't know what to do. Um, I need to watch a bunch of videos first. I'm not doing it right. Some people even feel embarrassed, right? When they're, when they're role playing alone, they can still have that embarrassment feeling. And so, you know, we have so many things during our day that, that make us feel shitty and embarrassed and lousy and incompetent, and we don't need this to be one of those. So what we want to emphasize with this thing, no matter what, is um, just saying yes to everyone's contribution, okay? Whatever you're thinking, whatever you want to do, whatever choices you make in the video, that's great. And we're going to accept the reality of each of those videos and carry it on. And we want to use very simple mechanics. If we use a system, a very simple system, I'll give some ideas for that if we use a system at all. Um, but we don't wanna make this complex and we don't wanna criticize people if they don't get it just right. So this will be hard for some of you to hear because I know some of you are sort of uh, basic expert types and that's cool. But for this activity, there's not gonna be any criticizing someone for oh, you forgot that you had a leather helmet on and this gave you a bane on this or like, hey, you should have added a plus D40 or attack or your initiative. What? None of that's going to be, uh, this is not what that is. this is about. This is about just like 
hey, that was really fun. You you um, brought the story forward. That's really interesting. Okay. Um, we want to try and maintain the continuity and respect the reality of the videos before us. And so, uh, you know, where that person leaves off, we want to start our video from there. Or if we don't, we want to explain why we're like leaping forward in time. We're going to keep the same character and I'll introduce the character. Uh, in fact, if they die, it'll be their heir who has the same stats as them. Um, and, you know, basically it's, uh, you can adapt uh, the, the assets we have in, in any way that you need. So again, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. This is the second of three times. If you're interested, send me an email at amanalone at proton.me. It'll be from now to the end of the month. Uh, when I said you have 72 hours to upload, um, that shouldn't be something, nothing should, a part, no part of this should stress you out. But even that, like if it's your turn and you get 72 hours uh, and you can't do it in that time, um, I hope you'll let me know before that so that I can send it to somebody else. But if it, if you know, it goes by and a 72 hours goes by and you can't do it, um, that's okay. Like I'll just put you to the back of the queue and then we'll get to you when we get to you. Um, no part of this is about pressure or punishments or anything like that. Okay. Okay. So, um, here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm, I'll show, first of all, um, I'll introduce the character. Okay. Uh, and I wrote the character up on like two different systems because you can really adapt the character to like whatever. Um, but I figured I would write, I would bring it up on two different systems. Okay, here. So here's uh, our character is Stilton Tarwater, a dwarf, and title is the Muffin Man. We'll see why. Um, and very strong constitution and pretty the strength is uh, pretty good as well. Starting strength, so good melee attack, which which uh, Stilton he will need or he will put good use to that because. Um, his nice battle axe, that's a D8, not a D80. That would be amazing. And um, yeah, so Stilton, uh, this is this is, is old fashioned, whatever that means to you, brawny fella who is a baker, calm and gloomy. And his misfortune was that he was exiled and he was exiled because um, he was exiled from Narlboot Depths because he didn't, uh, he didn't do what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to be a miner, and he said, I want to bake. I like to bake. And so they sent him out and said, well, you want to be a baker? Go somewhere else. And so that's what happened, was kicked out of um, Gnarl Root. And, and this, is, this is the basic. I used OSE for the first sheet just because this is sort of a universal system. If you're looking at this right now and you go, man, I don't know what any of this stuff means, then don't use this one. Uh, here's another example. I wrote it up on Dragon Bane, and I'm very sorry because for whatever reason, the Mac like preview app, that's like I could have used Adobe, but I didn't feel like linking it into the video program here. But anyways, as you can see, it cuts off the half of everything. But they, they, a lot of this is the same as what it said on the other sheet. Um, and yeah, so here's basically the same, same stats. Um, you know, the weakness was that is gloomy. And actually, I didn't update this, but but I figured out for gloomy, um, instead of, uh, yeah, this was what I rolled up as the weakness, but just to keep it, like, try to kind of consistent, we'll do a gloomy, and uh, we'll say cannot, cannot re-roll uh, charisma, because, you know, that's disheartened. He's already disheartened. Um. And yeah, so this is pretty as as good as I could adapted to that. Uh, there's no baker role, so I put like master blacksmith because that makes uh, him an artisan. So we just call him a master bakesmith, maybe. Um, so that's another example of that. And either way, um, it doesn't matter because you should really think of the stats like you could pick any system you want. If you have a system that's like a year zero and the, the starting stats are like one or two or zero, just think of it like this. The average is 11 or 12. So if, if, if you know, like low was negative one, medium is zero and strong is one, then this, these stats for that would be strength one, intelligence zero, wisdom zero, dex zero, constitution. That might be 
well, that's hit points, but maybe that would be two. And then if it was like nine or less, it's a negative one. And that's it's you don't have to spend too much time figuring that out. We just want to keep it relatively consistent, you know, pretty average stats other than strength a, li a little higher, um, dex a little higher and constitution higher. So there's lots of systems we can use. Um, the a really good one is one page solo. Uh, and this is free. It's uh, the Creative Commons 4.0 um, thing. And this is three pages. And it just gives you basically just walks you through how to do this. And this is actually a great solo engine to start with. Um, and yeah, you could download it here. I'll put the, oh, you can't really see it, can you? Darn. I hate when I can't scroll down. Um, that didn't work. There we go. Inflatable Studios dot itch dot io i'll put that link uh in there but yeah this is uh this is one system you could use if you want maybe it'd be a good time to learn that uh you could use the old school essentials uh solo one this is actually one of two They're, these are on drive through and this one will have different oracles and and this one also gives you like a good action table and gives you a good overview how to set something up um you could use Errant. The no art uh, edition of Errant is free on the website. And this one is is definitely got more to it. But if you were looking to like learn a new system or just use part of this, um, you can use this for solo play. That's another free one. Anyone that you want. Um, and, you know, it's 10 minutes. So even, you know, you should really, you should, it, it really is 10 minutes. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. Uh, so if you submit a 25 minute video, I'm just not going to link to it. Um, because we want to keep it simple. We want to keep everybody involved. Uh, you know, if it's 11 minutes, it's okay. Uh, but we're also, uh, I've decided we're going to start and just to keep everything simple. I made a little town called St. Ellen. It's a small town, a population of 150. And we could just say that, you know, um, uh, Stilton walked down this road and came into this city and right away noticed that something was weird. And so right now, all these numbered buildings, there's we don't know what any of them are. and But we just use this. And so say you go knock on the door of house one and you meet someone there named uh, Mrs. Bixby. And you... Uh, talk to them then when the next person plays uh we know that mrs bixby lives in house one but we don't know what's out here in the forest under number 12 and so the idea is we can build this out none of this is predetermined other than i think 43 here is where the boss is so we probably want to save that um and and yeah i think the the basic idea here is that um uh stilton comes into the town something's a little off the inhabitants are very scared and uh, there's a new mayor who's called the big bad baker in, in 43. And, uh, and so a lot of them are hiding in their houses and the baker has some, some baking related henchmen that are maybe out and looking and maybe at night there's some supernatural stuff going on, whatever we want. But this whole adventure is going to take place in St. Ellen, which I know is a little bit different than how uh, an RPG would normally go. You'd probably start in a town and then go out from there. But we're going to do it here so that we, we, we can just keep it in a limited space and it will be easy for all of us to know like what's been explored, what's not. And in fact, if you participate in this, um, like if you play, uh, if you're one of the players, we're, we're also going to just like update uh, after every play in the description or, or uh, I'll email out, you know, what items were added. Um, I'll level people up maybe if I feel that's appropriate and, and so on and so forth. But um, yeah, so you just you just start start the camera, uh, talk to people, use an oracle. If you get into combat, do combat in whatever way seems fair. And if. And if you are like looking at the stats that I just showed and you're like, I don't really understand this, go ahead and, and roll up uh, still in some new stats on whatever system you want and use those as long as strength and constitution are high and the rest are sort of medium, then just roll it up in whatever system you want to do. 
uh, that's not important. The only thing that is important is to keep it relatively the same character. So what we want to say is we don't suddenly want to have Stilton like to have, you know, the blessing of the uh, star codex and now can like shoot um, uh, celestial beams out of his ears and it incinerates the town like that. We're not going to do that. And that's what I call the uh, honky tonk space cannon. I got this idea once when I was playing uh, a, a game with my my nephew. He's a little guy. He was even littler then. And it was that thing that inevitably comes up during uh, when you're playing with a kid where it's like, well, well, I've got, you know, like I just got a super power up and now my hands are like double dynamite. And he said, yeah, well, I stuffed you into the honky tonk space cannon and shot you into outer space. And I was like, well, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Um, and then we want to avoid the honky tonk space cannon. And what that means is like you are free to go in whatever direction you want. But respect that it's a shared game and respect the reality of whoever cre did something before you. Because the ultimate way of saying, like, I don't give a shit about what you said is to be like, yeah, yeah, whatever happened near, this is the story I want to tell. And you don't keep any of the reality of it. And you pull out the honky tonk space cannon. And I don't know why all of you had such trouble with this boss. I just used the honky tonk space cannon and they were dead in two seconds. No, I can't stress it enough. No honky tonk space cannon. Um, at the end of this, I don't know, maybe we keep going. Uh, maybe we say, wow, that, that was a great idea that didn't execute very well. Maybe we continue it next year. I, I don't know. Um, combat will be interesting because I really do want us to stop at 10 minutes. So if you're mid combat, <laughs> the next person either has to pick up at that combat or maybe just talk about what happened at that combat and start after that. It's up to you. You're free to make it whatever you want. Uh, for myself, I'll be using the Fate Mill, which, of course, if you uh, still would like it until April 12th, it's still at TowerHouseCreative.com for 20% off. And this is a good transition to uh, my haul, because this wasn't part of my haul, but from Tower House Creative, I got Bell Whispers in the mail today. That went extremely fast. Um, and I was able to get it with a 20% discount, because... I used promo code MANALONE20, and you can too for five more days. So please do that. Um, I'll put the link down below. We'll take a look at this. Uh, but the last thing, again, this is the email. If you want to participate, please let me know as soon as possible because I am the next video I make, which is probably going to be in the next 24 hours, I'm going to post the first 10-minute video. And then I'm going to notify the first person of who's going next and has like the 72 hour clock is running. Um, and so uh, if you'd like to participate, just let me know as soon as possible. If you watch this like five days from now for the first time, shoot me an email. Let me know. Maybe maybe we couldn't fit you in. Uh, but either way, I just really looking forward to collaborating with all of you, seeing cool ideas that everybody has. And, you know, if, if you're on the fence about it, just uh, just try it um, because later, let's ask the Fate Mill Oracle. Um, Fate Mill, there's a, a player who's on the fence right now about playing. Uh, should they? Should they? Should they play? No. And this is why they should super play is what we call it. They should ultra play because it's not play. It's going to be their life fulfillment. And um, it's probably because we're calling it playing that it's getting in the way of of what what it is because maybe they're saying i don't have time to play i've got too many responsibilities and and so really you shouldn't play what you should do is just be just be in the moment this fate mill is so wise every time it always gives the right answer so you know if you're on the fence about it should you play no you should you should invest. You should be a part of this, right? This is not child's play. <laughs> Very wise. I was going to say it the same way myself and in the same words. Um, this is from, okay, so that's it. Any questions? Oh, you're not here. Okay, so email me if you have any questions. Uh, this is from Tower House Creative. This is Bell Whispers. Actually, write a comment if you have questions. I, I really don't like responding to emails. It makes me feel very stressed. Um, and this is a uh, setting agnostic, system agnostic. Um, 
And I really like these because there's a lot of, hey, hey, there, there's the same uh, logo here. That's pretty cool, right? Um, I love that everything is sort of in character. Um, what follows is a collection of ideas, methods, tools, tables, and tips to help you explore the depths of your imagination. See, this is kind of like perfect for not only the fate mill, but for what we're trying to do here, which is like, it's just a system. And here's some adventure starters. It tells you what you need. See, this is, we're on the totally the same page. All you need is some dice, an easy way to take notes, graph paper. You, can, you don't even have to use graph paper. Your favorite RPG rules system uh, and a mindset. And this is a little bit of the setting, beautiful art. I don't want to show, give away everything, um, but it is 48 healthy pages. And from what I've seen, oh yeah, we love this. Don't we, folks? Uh, D100 table, collected curiosities, hallways, uh, hateful hallways, oddities and obstacles, uh, a strange room, paths and rooms, additional rooms, what's the state of the door? Just these are the kind of oracles or tables that we love because, um, I don't know why I sounded like Trump there. We love these. We love the additional doors. Um oddities and obstacles yeah so this is the kind of stuff that we really love because uh it just is populates those ideas it gives us those little cues let's see what else is in here oh there's another letter from harold s trent the 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 investigator <laughs> i really love that and then another stick another sticker this one's even this one's pretty rad dude check that out hmm. mm -hmm. i'll put that down right now keep it coming Detective investigator Trent, because uh, we love, we love it. Oh, this is going to be my downfall. Okay, let's go on to the other stuff, and I'll figure out the sticker in a bit. But maybe if I just, no, 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 I'm on, I'm filming right now. I can't do that. Okay, so and then for my RPG hall, I had a nice hall. Let me talk to you about what. Um, the dilemma I've, I had again that I keep having, and I'm, I'm curious, because I think I've asked about this before, and there's some strong feelings about it. I stood with the pile that you see, right? The, the pile of the stuff that I eventually got. And in my other hand was the, for like the 20th time, in my other hand was the box set of uh, Forbidden Lands. And I was like, I should get this. I should get Forbidden Lands. I hear so many good things about it. It's Free League. It was, in a lot of ways, a precursor to Dragonbane. I love Dragonbane. But I just keep hearing that it's like an inferior version of Dragonbane. The box set was $50, um, which the Dragonbane starter set is $50, and you get standees, you get dice. And I just was looking at what's in the Forbidden Lands. It's interesting. You do get hardcover books in there which is actually a bit weird to me, even though I, I prefer that. I don't know. Um, see, see, because for me, a starter set should be a way for me to be like, do I like this? And if I like it, then I'll buy the hardcover. And so if you put the hardcover in there, it jacks the price up. And I usually am just like, well, I'll just get the book then. Anyways, the other thing it has in there is some stickers that you could put on the map to make it like a living map, which I also am on the fence about. Part of me really likes that. Um, but part of me feels like I would never use the stickers because I wouldn't want to ruin the map and I would not just use the map uh, once. But if you're someone who has like long-term campaigns, that's probably pretty cool. So again, in the end, I put it back on the shelf like I always do and decided to get a bunch of stuff instead. So um, first thing I got, uh, and this is something I've passed by a bunch of times, it's by Tim Woods. And this is the Game Master's Companion for developing inns, shops, taverns, settlements, and more. I've always passed on this one, number one, because Tim Woods has another one called Random Tables for Dungeons, which is what you hear about most often. But then as I page through this, 
I was like, this has such amazing lists and they're all so minimalist. And I actually really like that because if you're a solo player that leans a lot on um, role playing like I do, you actually don't want a lot of over determined information. Like a lot of times I just want a word or a name. It'll give us like a little bit of backstory sometimes, but like look how nuanced this stuff is. It's like legal, a list of legal punishments. Um, there's actually some really funny ones. Uh, <laughs> death by dehydration, my word. Um, holidays, different holidays in a town. And it starts getting useful for like other stuff besides a town. A haunted house, for instance, like this would be great to roll up before I walk into a house on the St. Ellen's map. What is this? Is this a bizarre greenhouse, an abandoned uh, a tower, a haunted house, whatever it is. You could just kind of roll those things up. And then this section on people is great for NPCs. Not enough of this stuff. That's a D100 of moods. Here's local gossip. Random bystanders. Um, criminals, troublemakers. I think there's even one that's like, what's in the barrel? Yeah, street parades. Bard quirks. This is great. This was great. It was like 15 bucks. I said, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm going to pick it up this time. And I did it. And I've never looked back since. Uh, this is Coriolis Atlas Compendium, which I was jumping for joy when I saw this because for $20, this is no longer available. And I cannot even find it online out of like way overpriced eBay. So when I saw this, if anyone's had this experience, maybe not even like with RPGs or with comics where you see something, and you're like, <gasps> I cannot believe they have that here. And you very, like very calmly bring it up to the front because you're, you're like, I hope that they don't suddenly be like, how did this get there? Oh, that's a hundred dollars. Uh, not that this is like some sort of collector's item or anything, but I could not find this and I'm running a cam. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in a campaign right now or starting soon. Uh, I'm GMing a Coriolis campaign starting in May, like an in-person. And so I was very happy because it does have a planet generator here. Um, and it just has a lot of other, uh, additional information, uh, about the Kua system, which is the main um, civilization planet in Coriolis, at least in the Third Horizon 2017 one. And it also has uh, like different exploration uh, tables, lots of good stuff, I think, for a GM. And yeah, I bet I can grab the PDF somewhere, but I really don't want to. I really, uh, when I'm like, you know, do you know my least favorite part of these uh, videos is like when I have to switch to PDF because it's just, it's annoying and it's not, I don't like scrolling, you know, scrolling just sucks. Um, yeah, and here's like a bunch of encounters um, and then it has these like uh, uh, little card spots at the end to track NPCs and different systems. So maybe that's only interesting to me, but because I just, it's not even available on the Free League website. You can't even buy this anymore. It's like permanently sold out. So I was pretty jazzed. Uh, the other thing I got, and I've passed on this so many times, but I finally, uh, because, and I'll tell you why I passed on it. I'll tell you why I didn't even give it a chance because I rarely buy settings. Because I always look at settings and it's like, yeah, use this with any RPG system you want. And I'm like, well, how about an RPG system? That I'm interested in that. But kind of come around to the fact that like, who gives a shit about this system? People are like way too hung up on that. Um, and, uh, you know, because you could have a setting that is just so bonkers good that it really doesn't matter. And when I opened this, I grieved for all the times I walked by this without buying it. But... This is, you know, this is like an indie zine level print here. And so when it, there was one left and I've been seeing it for months and I was like, you know what? If I don't get this, I may never see this thing again. What I love about this is not only the illustration because it's awesome. It definitely gives you a sense of like um, that sort of, I forgot this Super Nintendo game, but you traveled around the world map and it had really weird sounds. Like uh, it had beautiful music and then at night you see the stars and then it had music that was like doo -doo 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 -doo. and then at night it had this very eerie mystical music. But then the most, I, I, gotta, I gotta find actually what this game was called because when you encountered enemies, they all made the same sound which was um, and anyways, uh, it, it had this like sheltering sky feel. It was so beautiful. It was such a powerful part of my childhood. It was just like walking around that world map. 
And sometimes at night I get that feeling when it's like a starry night of like that game, which is supposed to be probably the opposite, right? You're supposed to like, you're supposed to like, you're supposed to be playing a video game and thinking of a beautiful starry sky, but this is the torture of the modern times as I'm beneath the starry sky thinking of a video game. Anyways, what I love about this is not only the art, but also that every bit of this is used without making it feel crowded. The spacing on this is so good. Here's the map. It takes place in Willow, Willow Town. It's got tons of really great tables. So this one is hooks, reasons why players end up stuck in Willow, rumors, weather, and descriptors, a lot in a compact. Here's the NPCs. It provides this really good, um, yeah, here's like the at the Blue Brew, you can get some fish pie, some overpriced bitter beer. And then you see all of these uh, NPCs and then, uh, where is it? Oh, right here is like the relationship between all the NPCs in town. So cool. Different, like uh, there's crow folk, rat folk. Um, here's the cause and effect list. And uh, uh, there's a little dungeon for the seaweed shrine. I don't want to show all of it, but the art is so cool. I just... Um, Ashen, oh, I probably don't want to see that. Um, and then this is a timeline of possible events, and then even the back cover random treasures to find, and even the back of the back cover is like a shop. Oh, this is how you do it, folks. I would not be capable of making something like this because it's got so much stuff that it should be crowded, but it's just so maximized in its use of space. So, this is Willow by the Lazy Lich. Um, edited by Jeer Hart and Tansy. So I'll try to find a, um, looks like it was part of Zine Quest. I'll try to find like a link to that. The final thing was a total impulse buy. We'll do an opening of it now. This is Paper App Dungeon and it's from Lucky Duck Games in Krakow, Poland by a guy, Tom Brinton. And, um, <laughs> There's a couple of things that attract me to this. Number one, it's this tiny notebook dungeon crawler. And they said that each notebook is different. So it's like 10 bucks. So I was like, yeah, why not? Each notebook, one player, each notebook is individually printed so that not only is each page, each floor of the dungeon different. Here, let's actually unbox it. Not only is each floor of the dungeon different, each of these notebooks that someone buys is different which is not that big of a deal. It's like saying like every Sudoku puzzle, you know, is different. It's like, yeah, well, you know, you're just kind of placing different things, but, but I think that that is novel and fresh and, um, but the part that killed me that I was just like, I gotta get this is it keeps referring to the dice as like P one through P six. And I'm like, what is that? It's because the, the pencil is the dice and it actually, yeah so that would be rolling a three right you just kind of spin it and then wherever it stops you just take that um rolled uh, another three i hope this isn't weighted to three all right four um yeah so let's just I, i'm probably not going to do a playthrough because i want to save this uh for when i'm like um actually traveling or something this is perfect for that but yeah, there's a, a code here uh, if you want to look at the rules and then it gives a basic how to play. You just basically draw a line through the dungeon and it has like a little key for what all the objects mean. Um, you get to decorate your hero. And I'm, I'm guessing like this is a, um, I don't know what this is, but you have your starting HP, uh, how many coins or treasure that you have. And maybe if you got or lost maybe you could hold like two items in there or something like that but yeah there is let's look at this um how many floors total oh a little stats at the back final coin the treasure uh okay here's a shop back here sorry i just really don't want to um reveal anything to anybody yeah so it looks like there's 44 floors okay Cool. A, a doubling potion. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. So, so actually you play it in order. And then as you encounter different stuff between floors is when it comes up. I like that even more. Okay. So like, let's just see. So you go to floor one, you go to floor two, 
floor three, floor four, floor five, and then you get to a shop. You can get a snack, and then you go to six. I love that. That's great. Yeah, there's like little um, uh, things in between. Fun. Okay, we're going to have some fun with that. So, yeah, that's, um, again, Lucky Duck Games. Um, I don't know. I wasn't able to find this. I was able to find Lucky Duck Games, but I'm not sure if it's the same one because I wasn't able to find this on there. But here, pause that and scan it. I guess that could um, that can help. But that is very fun. Can we get a... Is it my, yeah, there we go. Um, I don't like... All right, so yeah, um, so the next time you see me, uh, I will be doing the 10 minute uh, video. Um, it might, mine might be 12. It's not because I'm taking, you know, uh, privileges of being the, the non game master game master, but just because I want to do it, since it might be the first video that people watch in the series, I just want to do like a little overture just to explain what it is and then. Uh, I will start, and once that happens, uh, we'll, we'll send it to the next person and on and on. If it gets all the way around again, maybe I'll have to do another one or somebody else will join. Um, if you are interested, please reach out uh, at a man alone at protein.meat, proton.me. And yeah, hey everyone, have a great day. Okay, that was weird. I shouldn't have said it.